realized that, and I had a candid discussion with Todd uh, on the table, that there's really a lot of digital transformation happening in and around us. And when we think about digital transformation, experience is the key, experience is the currency by which we can buy mindshare, by which we can engage with our customers. Um, think about this, and maybe some of you know this. Uh, off the top of our heads, how many times do we look at our mobile phones in a day? Maybe less than 50, 50 to 100, 150. An actual study was done, and this was a year ago. The average Filipino, or the average person in the Philippines, looks at his phone 150 times in a day. Now, think about it. How many times do you look at your wife, your husband, or your kids in a day? <laughs> then that's, that's the context where we are living. It's really been part of our daily lives, and this is empirical data that shows it. So the way to a customer, the way to us, is really through our mobile phones. What experience of mobile phones do we have? This is my one-year-old son. So he, well, we waited for almost 10 years for him. Um, and when we do our calls, I compare it. My first experience of a mobile phone was the clunky mobile phones, right? For those of you who remember, when Nokia was still in vogue, or Motorola, the clam. Okay. So a lot of it was really text or calls. Or further back, it was the, um, the cases in the car that you really couldn't carry or wasn't really mobile. But the experience of our kids nowadays of mobile phones, their first experience is really about video, right? FaceTime, Viber video. In fact, it's funny because when, uh, when I call home, my wife tells me that if I don't use FaceTime, um, Rocco just looks at the phone and doesn't react. Somehow he's expecting my face to be in the phone. So this is the type of consumer who we are looking at in the next 10 years. And this is the type of behavior that I think is mainstream in all of us. What before could have been considered amazing is now expected. So what does that mean for us as companies? So if consumers have somehow jumpstart and really revolutionize the demands and their experiences, it also means that this very cliche term, digital transformation, is something that is imperative today. If before you had talk and text, so we could do our brick and mortar stores, we evolved into mobile internet and browsing, so we can have our websites, that's fine. We evolved into web and mobile enabled SMEs. So we have mobile apps, we have transactional websites, but now the call today is really to be a data-driven enterprise. When we say data-driven, it means that we are able to gather as much information about our consumers such that we are able to give them the experience that they want and the experience that they expect. And in order to do that, we ourselves have to be enabled by the proper infrastructure. The challenge we have is that, yes, that's where the consumer is, yes, that's where the markets are, but we have this term VUCA, and I think this has been around for quite a long while. Uh, maybe a number of you know what VUCA stands for. It was popularized by the US military. So we live in a VUCA world. When we say VUCA, we mean volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. So if we had to summarize VUCA in a simpler word, it means that there's just a lot more risk today. When we talk of business risks, there are a lot more risks today. And the challenge with risks is that if we want to manage them or mitigate them, we look at two angles. One is the magnitude of the risk. How big is it? Will it bring my company down? Number two, what's the probability of it happening? Traditionally, maybe 20 years ago, huge risks with great magnitude had low probability. The challenge we have now is that it's no longer mutually exclusive. Big risks with large magnitude 
can have great prob probabilities, especially with cybersecurity, with all the issues on climate change. The, the operating environment we are in today is definitely risky. And what does that mean for all of us? Business continuity in our own enterprises has become unavoidable and has become a real uh, strategic imperative. Business continuity is needed to compete today. And that's where when PLDT was looking at its own investments in infrastructure, of course, um, uh, data connectivity is a given, but what a critical component that was lacking in Clark was really a data center. And we are inaugurating this data center in the next two weeks. Why this is significant for Clark is that it's the largest digital infrastructure investment by a DC provider outside of Manila. Most of these large data centers, and for those who are familiar with these, centralized in Metro Manila. Second, it's the first tier three compliant. What does that mean? When we talk of data centers and business continuity, it means that no matter what happens, your systems should be up. It has 1,500 in capacity, meaning it can accommodate a lot of the locator keep, a lot of the locator demands, a lot of the entire Luzon demands. It's seismic zone four um, design and build uh, compliant, meaning it can withstand an uh, earthquake magnitude of eight. It's nearly 200 meters above sea level. So if we, if we hear about the, uh, the tsunamis that have happened in, the other, in other locations, it's highly unlikely that we will be hit here in Clark, especially since we're 55 kilometers from the nearest body of water. The reason why we chose Clark, and this is the pitch for Clark, is because of three main reasons. One, it's a secure environment. Second, it's a prime business location. We see from the companies that have decided to localize here or locate here, these are multi multinational companies who have looked at the operational risks, have looked at the tax benefits, and have looked at all the other angles about operating in a free port zone. And last, and very relevant today, uh, because we have um, our Mr. Kagiran over here, transport accessibility, one of the biggest um, considerations for disaster recovery and business continuity is the accessibility of the location. In Clark, we are close to the highways, we have an airport, we're close to Subic, which is a seaport, which makes it very accessible. What data centers really provide is peace of mind. The services are secondary, but the bigger portion of a data center is really the certifications. I think all of you are familiar with ISO, PCI DSS, so I will not dwell on that. But what we want to point out is Next Center. As many of you maybe know, we are owned by NTT Communications, one of the leading carriers in the world, and they operate 140 data centers across the globe. From those 140 data centers, they have accumulated best practices, they have accumulated proper global practices, who and they have um, cascaded it down to us to help us in our own data center operations. So we can be assured that our data center operations are even beyond ISO, PCI DSS standards. And in terms of investing in the country, it's really beyond just Metro Manila. In fact, we are inaugurating one in Davao Monday next week, and Clark will be Friday next week. So it's been a very active infrastructure investment spree for PLDT Group. As we see, this is very critical nowadays with all that's been happening uh, on business continuity. Now, allow me to end with this. How will Clark, in turn, benefit from Vitro? One, we know, and those who are considering, uh, I'm sure are looking at this, uh, infrastructure, digital infrastructure is key to a a location's attractiveness. So with a tier three data center in Clark, it will increase the investment attractiveness of Clark, not only locally, but regionally and globally as well. Second, 
Connectivity is a very important foundation of any operation. Having a data center local to Clark means that Clark also has a gateway to the domestic network as well as international network of the PLDT group, ensuring that you have enough bandwidth to connect all your sites with resiliency. And last, and I think this is the most relevant of all, it helps accelerate digital transformation. We believe that Luzon has a lot of runway in front of it. And this is our way of helping enable Luzon, not only Clark, to compete in the digital age. So allow me to end by saying this. Um, yes, risk is definitely a part of our current operating environment. Yes, we live in a VUCA world, but using new technologies, adopting digital transformation is something that we can do to mitigate all these risks and be prepared to compete in this environment. Thank you very much. Okay, very good.